Trouble in Chang'an Sometime during the first four months of 192, after the coalition forces turned on each other, all members of the Dong clan extending to those through marriage were granted rank within the court. Dong Min was made general of the left by Dong Zhuo, and Zhuo's nephew, Dong Huang, was made colonel of the centre army. Between them, they controlled military affairs. All of Dong Zhuo's sons wore gold and purple tassels, which displayed their new Marquis titles. Even those who were still in the arms of maids and concubines were enfiefed. Dong Zhuo would often summon the officials of the Three Terraces, the masters of writing, and those under them. They would all go to his offices to either report or receive instructions. He once said, If things go well, I shall be the master of the empire. Even if I fail, however, I can hold out here in comfort until I die of old age. His fortress at May was 16 metres high, 16 metres wide, and stored 30 years worth of grain supplies. By now, Dong Zhuo had become relentless in his punishments, and treated his men insolently. If an officer dared speak against him, he would be executed instantly. Everyone felt insecure, which led to Wang Yun, Wang Wan, Shi Sun Rui, and Yang Zhen making secret plans to kill Dong Zhuo. He knew the people resented him, but he deeply trusted Lu Bu. He was stronger than other men, and a master of the bow and horse, so he accompanied Dong Zhuo everywhere as a guard. He loved and trusted him completely, so they soon took an oath as father and son. Dong Zhuo was unpleasant, stubborn and overpowering by nature, and on one occasion, Lu Bu had a slight disagreement with him. He grabbed a hand axe and threw it at Lu Bu, who ducked quick enough to dodge it. Lu Bu changed his tone and apologised, so Dong forgave him, but Lu Bu now held a grudge against him. In addition to this, Lu Bu took the opportunity to seduce one of Dong Zhuo's maids whenever she passed by whilst he was on guard. He eventually succeeded, but was left with a guilty conscience. Historically, this mentioned maidservant is all that is known about the fictional Diao Chan. The flying general Lu Bu and the master of writing Wang Yun had always been on good terms. The latter would always behave well towards Lu Bu. Lu trusted him and so told him about the incident regarding the thrown axe. So Wang Yun told Lu Bu about their secret plot to kill Dong Zhuo, and asked Lu to be an inside man for the operation. When Lu Bu doubtfully asked, what if we are like father and son, Wang argued that they are not blood related, and that the feeling cannot be mutual because Dong Zhuo threw an axe at him. Thus, Lu Bu agreed to help out. The Emperor had been ill for some time, but on the 22nd of May 192 he had just recovered, so there was a great assembly at the Wei Yang apartments. Wearing his state robes, Dong Zhuo rode up in his chariot. His troops lined the road with camps to the palace. Foot soldiers were on the left, and cavalry were on the right, with camps and guards all around. Lu Bu and many others were ordered to act as guards in the front and rear. The master of writing for archery gentleman, Shi Sun Rui, personally wrote an imperial order which had been given to Lu Bu. Lu had his friend, a man from his home commandery, Li Su, disguise himself in a guard's uniform, together with over a dozen men. They were to stand behind the northern lateral gate and wait for the carriage. When the chance presented itself, Li Su stabbed Dong Zhuo with a lance, but the tyrant's armour under his clothes protected him. He was thrown from the chariot and wounded in his left arm, then cried out for Lu Bu. When he appeared, he said, I have orders to kill the rebel minister. Dong cursed him. Useless dog, you dare do this? He was stabbed by Lu Bu's spear, who ordered his men to remove Dong Zhuo's head. When the master of records came forward to attend the corpse, he was also killed by Lu Bu. The third and final person to be killed by Lu Bu in this incident was the coordinator at Dong Zhuo's granary at the fortress at Mei. Lu Bu took command of the troops when he read out his edict. This order requires that Dong Zhuo is to be executed, and that is all. For the others, no question will be asked. Tyranny was vanquished, and the people came out in joy to dance in the streets. The city's shops were filled with people selling pearls, jade, dresses and clothing. Expensive items were sold. The revenue was then used for wine and meat to hold great banquets and celebrations. Dong Zhuo's corpse was displayed at the marketplace. He had become a big fat man, and due to the heat, the fat flowed from his body to the street. The guards on sight lit a big lamp and placed it in his belly button. It burnt clear and bright till dawn. This went on for several days. The members of the Dong clan who were still at May were either cut down or shot down by their own men. The entire clan was exterminated, burnt, and their ashes were scattered on the roads. Additionally, Tai Yong was imprisoned for allegedly expressing grief at Dong Zhuo's death. He was sentenced to death and eventually died in prison, despite other officials trying to persuade Wang Yun out of this, but he denied all of their pleas. The imperial order had stated, 
For the rest, there are no questions asked, and at this time, Dong's generals Li Zhue and Guo Si were still in the east. Lu Bu still feared the generals despite the edict, and so wanted Wang Yun to kill them all, but he refused. He believed that they had only been following court orders, and so were bound by duty to follow them, right or wrong. Lu then suggested to distribute the treasure from Mei Fortress to the generals, to buy their loyalty, but because Wang Yun thought Lu Bu was only a brute, he took no notice of this advice. Wang Yun and Shi Sun Rui discussed about releasing another edict to pardon all of the generals who served Dong, but Wang was afraid that if they say the generals are wicked and rebellious, then pardon them altogether, they will become more uncertain, and that this is no way to settle them, so the edict was not approved. He was told that the armies of Liang province dreaded the Yuans, and feared the men east of the passes. He was advised against dismissing the troops suddenly, then opening the passes. Instead, he should give Huang Fu Song command over the troops to keep them peaceful and secure. Wang Yun considered the men east of the passes as his allies, but he wanted to keep the passes sealed whilst they marched to settle Liang province. He wanted to keep a garrison of men at Shan, but knew this would make the men east of the passes suspicious, so Wang Yun ordered for the Liang armies to be disbanded altogether. His arrogant behaviour, dismissing of his advisors' opinions, treatment of Dong's clan and Tai Yong all contributed to his ultimate downfall at Chang'an. Dong Zhuo's former colonels and generals from Liang province became anxious, as the rumour that they would all be killed quickly spread. They had all heard of the treatment of Tai Yong, got their orders to disband, but received no pardon. Li Su arrived in Shan with orders to kill Niu Fu, but his men successfully resisted the attack. Li Su fled to Hong Nong, where he was arrested and executed by Lu Bu. Niu Fu was eventually killed by Hu Jie, who sent his head back to Chang'an. When Li Zhue, Guo Si, and Zhang Ji returned to Shan, they discovered an attempt had been made to isolate them in the east, evident by the fact that their acting officer was dead. Li Zhue begged for a pardon from the court, but Wang Yun stubbornly refused. Panic soon set in within the trio, who planned to scatter back to Liang along three separate routes, but Jie Xu said, If you leave your troops and travel alone, the chief of a single village can arrest you. They took his advice to attack Chang'an instead, to avenge Dong Zhuo and set the empire straight. Even if they fail, there would still be time to escape. They marched west with several thousand men, with Li Zhue recruiting as he went. Their target was to take over Chang'an, or at least escape to Liang province. Wang Yun ordered Hu Zhen and Yang Ding to gather their forces to dissuade Li Zhue from his attack, but they simply collected their troops and returned to their homes in Liang. By the time Li Zhue reached Chang'an, he had gathered more than 100,000 supporters. Fan Chao and Li Meng had arrived, and began to lay siege to the city. This lasted for little over a week, until some of Lu Bu's men surrendered, and gave their new allies entry to the city on the 28th of June. Lu Bu fought them in the streets, but he was hopelessly outnumbered. He ended up fleeing with a hundred cavalier, and tried to get Wang Yun to escape with him, but he wanted to remain beside the emperor instead. Wang fled northeast of the Emperor through the Xuanping Gate, but they were surrounded by Li Zhue's men. The rebels bowed down before the Emperor, who said to them, Gentlemen, you have set soldiers loose everywhere. What do you want? Li Zhue explained that they were merely avenging Dong Zhuo and would not dare make rebellion. He begged to finish this business, then go to the Commandant of Justice for punishment. This gave Wang Yun little option but to surrender himself over to Li Zhue who then led his cabal to kill over 10,000 officials and commoners, including Liu Kai, Zhu Huan, Sui Li, Wang Shi, and Huang Wan. Li Zhue feared of disposing of Wang Yun, as he had earlier appointed two loyal men of his to the districts on either side of Chang'an. Song Yi and Wang Hong both received invitations to the capital, but Wang Hong knew it would most likely result in his death. He told Song Yi that it is only because that they are still at large that Wang Yun has not yet been executed, and that if they surrender, then all of their families will be killed. Song Yi insisted that it's difficult to judge good fortune from ill, and that the first principle should be to not disobey commands. Wang Hong proposed a plan to lead armies to attack Li Zhue, and ally themselves with the men east of the passes. This way, they can turn ill fortune to good. But Song Yi was still not swayed by the argument, and Wang Hong feared he could not do it alone, so they both obeyed the summons. They were both predictably arrested and executed, along with Wang Yun and his family, on the 4th of July 192. Li Zhue went on to promote his group of generals of varying degrees, and wanted to enfief Xia Xu as a Marquis, but he refused. My proposal was just a plan to save our skins. What have I done to deserve such a reward? They wanted to make him supervisor of the Masters of Writing, but again he refused, because his name was not well known, thus would not be respected. Jia eventually settled with a promotion to the Master of Writing, 
as in this way, he could still distance himself from the involvement in the coup. When Dong Zhuo was killed, Wang Yun took full responsibility and credit for the act, whilst Shi Sun Rui refused all rewards and declined any enfiefment. This meant when Li Zhue rebelled, he took it out on Wang Yun, but Shi Sun Rui was able to avoid an ill fate and so was spared. By October, Li Zhue and his cabal had control over the court, and each member, Li Zhue, Guo Si, Fan Chao and Zhang Ji were enfiefed as a marquee and received promotions. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.